Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kitchen Stadium for our first ever Iron Chef Barista Battle. For hundreds of years, people have enjoyed the beverage we now call coffee. And today, we find out which company has what it takes to be the best investment. Let's meet our challengers for this evening. Chef Stefano Origini started in a local cafe in Vermont 25 years ago. Stepping in a kitchen stadium tonight with his innovative and fresh Green Mountain coffee drinking style, he hopes to dethrone the Iron Chef. From Berkeley, California, in 1966, Iron Chef Masaharu Marimoto has been a longtime competitor in this program. His flagship store, Pete's Coffee and Tea, has been an inspiration to many, including Starbucks. Let's see our competitors. So I am here today with Chef Warren Jean. Chef Warren Jean, what are you looking to accomplish today? My objective every day is to be a leader in the specialty coffee industry by providing high quality brew as well as innovative brewing systems to the customer at the convenience of their own home. So basically what I'm going to do is, you know, as I've been doing and take it one cup at a time. Wise Word is my first time competitor at Iron Chef America. And I'm here now with Chef Morimoto. Chef Morimoto, what are you going to do today? Thank you. The main goal today is to continue gaining market share on Starbucks. I'm also going to try and expand my gourmet roasted coffee beans into new, new markets, such as higher end restaurants and grocery stores, as well as several other outlets. But the continuation of our quality here is the most important thing. Thank you, Chef Morimoto. And now we're going to head to the main floor. There's one last thing to reveal tonight the secret ingredient. The secret ingredient tonight is the processed and packaged good roasted coffee industry. And I say unto you the words of my uncle, all is cuisine. And right off the bat, we see our contestants starting with the going green industry trend. Green Mountain is cooking up one of their climate change grants to spur environmental research. Orangini is also working with Green Mountain's award-winning eco-friendly packaging. Ooh, a slight hiccup on Morimoto's side though, as he spills some of his coffee beans. Shouldn't be too much of a problem though. Pizza is known for using what they call mesa beans to regenerate soil and to feed animals. Well, I wouldn't recommend wasting much more. Unfortunately, another trend in the industry right now is an increase in ingredient prices and transportation costs, causing a subsequent increase in almost all grocery prices. But we can certainly expect a high level of freshness, quality, and specialization that is found in the nature of these two heavy hitters. Each with several channels of distribution, each can be found at your local grocery store, a corner cafe, or even at fast food joints. We are halfway into the competition. Let's see how our guys are doing in the kitchen. Connie? So Chef Warren Genie, what tactics are you going to use for later tonight? Well, my team and I are going to keep building brand strength as well as focus on our Keurig Single Cup Brewer. We also want to capitalize on our affordability as well as our effective supply chain distribution to wholesalers. Thank you. So Chef Morimoto, what are your tactics tonight? I just plan on sticking with my roots, providing customers mostly with fine coffee in whole bean form. Pete's is no Starbucks. Coffee and tea is in my name and I'm going to hold true to it. Thank you. Thanks, Connie. Well, Bob, with two great chefs, each with their own unique but effective strategy, how can we differentiate between the two? It's not easy, Chris, though there are some noticeable differences. Iron Chef Morimoto uses a traditional Kapojo style that has been around for centuries. He uses a lot of fresh and high-quality coffee beans from Africa, the Americas, and Southeast Asia, which are roasted, packaged, and delivered from Pete's Alameda facility. Whole bean sales account for 60% of Pete's total revenues. Orangini, on the other hand, uses the Green Mountain coffee techniques. Although he uses both whole bean coffees and already ground brews, his trademark is the Keurig K-Cup, which brews one cup of coffee at a time in different flavors. Green Mountain sold 711,000 of its Keurig brewers in the fourth quarter of 2008, 121% more than did a year ago. Green Mountain also has a large part of their business in the wholesale industry, primarily after discontinuing their retail store operations in September of 1998. They renewed a deal with McDonald's that put Newman's Own Coffee, one of their divisions, into 600 franchises around the nation. And as time begins to come to a close, we see Chef Morimoto is composed as always. This is child's play compared to the 170 Pete's Coffee and Tea Shops he currently manages, with 30 on the way. And time's up! That brings this action-packed Iron Chef Barista Battle to a close. So Chef Orangini, what have you prepared for us today? Buongiorno, or hello judges. Before you make your decision, I'd like you to take a few things into consideration. One, for the past five years, my company has had an annual compound revenue growth rate of 18.7%. Also, we're unaffected by the recession. Well, as in our last quarter, our revenue growth was approximately 55%. Also, we have a large portion in the wholesale industry, which a lot of people don't know about. Last year, we had sales of 27 million pounds of coffee beans, which leapt up 10% from the year 2006. So, here you go. Enjoy. So now, Chef Morimoto, what have you brought for us? Why don't you know? okay, don't you? Well, I started with the same basic formula I follow at Pete's every day. First, highly selective sources, then an artisan roasting process, then delivering my product fresh to result in what I call the best cup. In the Bay Area alone, we own almost 46% of the market share in specialty coffees. 
The number of stores our whole beans are sold at has increased 40% in the last year to almost 8,500 in 2008. And on average, we do $1.3 million in sales per retail store. Thank you. Judges? So gentlemen, if you may now leave the room so the judges can make their deliberations. Thank you. Professor Arnoldson, what are your thoughts? Well, let's get right at it by talking some marketing strategy between these two, starting with segmentation. Pete says retail stores in California, Massachusetts, Colorado, Illinois, Oregon, and Washington. It also tends to cater to an older, mature, upper-middle-class demographic for people who are real coffee drinkers and are looking for high-quality coffee and tea products in the retail stores, as well as whole bean form at home. Although Green Mountain Coffee can be found anywhere, domestically or internationally, they don't necessarily have a demographic. They just want to provide coffee for customers seeking convenience and high quality. I think we should take a look at the internal and external factors to determine a winner here. Pete's is strong in their quality, but they're still small. Expanding into new markets and products will help improve their weaknesses. Green Mountain thrives on the wide distribution, but also lacks focus in its product line. It can be more effective by enacting a stronger marketing mix to push its products. Well, if we're talking about the Swats of each company, might as well give a mention to the four P's. Pete's Place includes their retail stores, high-end grocery stores, and an extensive home delivery system that starts on the website and ends up in the hands of consumers. Their main product is hand-roasted Arabica beans in a large variety of flavors. They also offer premium teas. In terms of price, the regular menu coffee tends to be anywhere from $10 to $20 per pound, and their grocery store prices are similar to those sold in Pete's locations. Pete's uses very little promotion for their products, but will sometimes offer coupons or engage in shelf price reductions. Green Mountain Coffee has no particular place. You can find their product anywhere. They have a large array of products, Arabica whole bean coffees, already ground coffees, organic products, and coffee and espresso machines. Green Mountain gets their beans straight from coffee ex exporters and farmers from all around the world. They roast the beans at multiple roasting facilities in the country and then distribute their products worldwide. Their prices tend to be a little cheaper than Pete's. You can pick up a cup for one or two bucks at most local joints. Their packages of coffee and grocery stores retail at about $13. For promotion, they publish advertisements in catalogs and direct mail programs. Promotion also comes from retail locations, such as McDonald's or Flyers in local grocery stores. In the industry, Pete's is known for their quality, competing in a segment with Starbucks. However, Green Mountain is more cost-effective and does not fare too poorly in their quality. Pete's is really on top for operations management. They were awarded the LEED Gold Certificate for efficiency with electricity, water, and environmental use. I also like how Pete's trains employees and managers to monitor for top quality. Pete's also has a good customer service section that's receptive to feedback relating to quality issues. And both companies have a high internet presence as well. As you can see from each of their main pages, Pete's is a bit more aesthetically pleasing, but Green Mountain has a direct link to their investors' pages as well as easier navigation throughout their website. Both have great praise via word of mouth and people on social networks are really talking about the fact that they love the convenience of Green Mountain's Keurig machine and Pete's easy direct online shipping. Hey guys, what's really important here is the company's financials. Current ratios for both companies are very similar, meaning that Green Mountain is doing a good job of outweighing the current liabilities despite size. And debt to equity, Pete's is not very debt financed, but total liabilities have gone up by 26% since 2006, while owner's equity has increased by only 12%. In debt to total assets, it's evident that Pete's is beginning to expand, whereas Green Mountain is steps ahead. In operating leverage, Pete's has a high operating leverage probably due to their high markup on their goods, but it's half for Green Mountain because they have much more stable prices that don't demand as much of a markup. The return on sales has been steady for Pete's, but Green Mountain has changed much more. The net income has increased by only about 43% for Pete's, but Green Mountain's net income has surged of about 130% since 2006. In return on equity, Pete's is using their extra income to cover additional paid in capital expenses, while Green Mountain has, owner's equity has climbed by 86%. I think we can make a decision based on all three aspects and from what we've seen in the kitchen today. And we now have the verdict for tonight. The winner of Iron Chef Barista Battle is Chef Orangini. And now, here's a breakdown of the scores. Green Mountain achieves marketing success through affordability, convenience of accessibility, and customer awareness due to their wide distribution channels. However, Pete's is more efficient in operations management because they focus on their relationship with suppliers. They also emphasize the use of information systems and technologies to improve quality and customer service. But Green Mountain suits Pete's in financial success. They are doing exceptionally well, even during the recession, with climbing net income and revenues while averting debt that is financing their expansion. In conclusion of these categories, Green Mountain has maneuvered strategically to prevail as the winner for tonight. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.